Okay, well, let's get started. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to see that we have a good group here, and we are so excited to have our presenter, Angie Barnett, who is the CEO of Better Business Bureau of Greater Maryland. And we are very thankful for her for presenting this class in collaboration with the library. So welcome to Cryptocurrency, Credible or Con. Angie Barnett has 15 plus years experience serving in executive roles for nonprofit organizations prior to getting to the Better Business Bureau, where she has been since 2006. The Better Business Bureau's mission is to foster and build marketplace trust. It has 3,000 accredited businesses and as such ranks as one of Maryland's largest business organizations. Angie is a 2000 graduate of Leadership Maryland and currently serves as the incoming chair for the Executive Alliance. She serves on the state's Project Safe Work Group and is a governor's appointee to the Consumer Council. She says doing the right thing for the right reason is a hallmark of trust, a mantra for BBB operations, and an expression of my own core beliefs. When your work permits you to reflect your core values, you are more effective for the organization and the extension of yourself as you balance work and home. Amen. I couldn't agree more. Amen. I've really been looking forward to this presentation and I'm going to turn it over to Angie. Great, wonderful. Before I click on and share our presentation, I just wanna say thank you guys for having me here. I really appreciate it. Now, <clears throat> a couple of uh, points to mention before we get in, and that is Better Business Bureau Cryptocurrency, what did the two have to do with each other? So let me share with you um, that I do work at Better Business Bureau and the reason we are involved in discussions around cryptocurrency is it is a source of scam, fraud, and complaints that we receive here at Better Business Bureau. So it's become part of the exchange within the marketplace between businesses and customers, scam artists, and their victims. And as such, we had to uh, bring ourselves up to speed as much as we could on cryptocurrency. So our source of education, training, and webinars for ourselves professionally has been through the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. They are our identified points of contact and experts to help us learn about cryptocurrency, to help us handle or process complaints, and help us help guide us through the um, uh, I guess, breaking down and the investigation of scams and fraud. So we look to them to build our education. And that's the information I'm imparting with you today. So I just wanted to let you know, the source of the information that I share is one, self-reported complaints and scam reports to BBB using our scam tracker tool, and number two, information which includes data and statistics that comes from the Federal Trade Commission. They, I also utilize their vocabulary, their vernacular and explaining. So that also um, allows me to, to uh, begin with the end point where I'll come to, and that is um, obviously for more information, BBB has launched a study um, that's open to the public on cryptocurrency, which a lot of the information I'll present is in that study. And of course, we always direct people to the Federal Trade Commission, uh, a simple browser search of FTC and cryptocurrency, and you'll find lots of information there. So um, those are the only disclaimers that I have to make, except I'm clearly not an expert in this, but I am a, a vehicle to share and communicate information. So I am in great hopes that um, this, that you can see my screen. So um, do I have a thumbs up that you are seeing? Whoops. It looks good to me. All right, thank you so much. All right, Better Business Bureau Cryptocurrency. It's a new tool for fraud and scams. So that's what I'm gonna talk about. Um, before I get into what we're gonna achieve today, I want you to listen to some statistics, again, gathered these from the FTC. 
cryptocurrency, most often we're familiar with the term Bitcoin. So listen to these statistics. You ready? Mind blowing. The total value of all Bitcoins in the world is estimated to be $1 trillion. The total value of all Bitcoin in the world is estimated to be at $1 trillion. This is an industry that's having a tremendous impact on the economy. A single Bitcoin worth $2,000 in 2017 reached an all-time high. Single Bitcoin, $2,000 2017 reached an all-time high of $67,000 worth in 2021. Bitcoin is very volatile. We hear about it in the news, don't necessarily know what it means, but it's very volatile. And this morning, today, a single Bitcoin is worth 22,000. So $2,000 value in 2017, 2021, it hit 67,000. Today, a single Bitcoin is worth 22,000. So I've shared those statistics to let you know this is, um, uh, you know, whether right, wrong, whether we agree or not agree, whether it's going to collapse or not, who knows? But Bitcoin right now and cryptocurrency as a whole is playing a, uh, is a big player in today's world economics. And it trickles down. And I'll share with you what we were discussing before we started this. The day that I went to get um, a, a manicure, pedicure service, that I'm required to pay now through using Zelle, the um, pay payment app. Zelle asked me if I wanted to make payments in Bitcoin. And I was going, what? Boy, it's entered into my world. This is something I need to learn about. So Better Business Bureau partnering up with the FTC and based on all the information we're getting from consumers, let me talk about some of the concerns of Bitcoin. So again, FTC in 2021, consumers reported to the FTC a loss of $750 million in um, transactions that they lost to scam and fraud. $750 million reported to FTC. And what you wanna remember there is people are most often, when it comes to financial loss, particularly romance scams, investment scams, they don't necessarily report. They sit on their losses. They hold it in. They're embarrassed. I should have known better. Can't believe I fell for that. And they don't necessarily re um, report their losses, the scams, the fraud, the deception, or even the complaints to um, the resources that could actually take action. So Better Business Bureau, our numbers are a little different, but at BB in 2021, we had 2,500 complaints. These are complaints filed with BBB across the country. These are 2,500 complaints in which somebody was doing business with a business using cryptocurrency, and the loss was $7,900,000 in 2021, just reported to Better Business Bureau. Scams this is not, this is where I fell for a scam. It's not a legitimate business. I was ripped off by a scam artist. That loss reported in 2021, again, was 7.9 million. So even people reporting to BBB, it's much lower numbers. But overall, what I want to bear in mind is we are beginning to see this year over year increase in financial losses people falling for scams and frauds, people doing business with real businesses, legitimate businesses, in which cryptocurrency is involved, and we're beginning to see monetary losses. So one of the things we want to do is to really share with you um, today just a few of the basic key terms and concepts. We want to give you an idea of how digital currency and is being used in scams today the crime that crypto that's occurring in cryptocurrency markets. I've got some examples of victims' experiences as reported to Better Business Bureau, and we'll wrap up with some tips. 
So um, that is the financial importance of today's information. And um, my simple, simplistic version of um, Zell asking me if I wanted to pay for something using Bitcoin, going to my local ATM and seeing Bitcoin exchange options as part of my ATM experience, that lets me know this is not just um, a concept that I'm hearing on the news, but it's really genuine and real today. So hopefully we'll be able to cover these items and I'll be able to answer any of your questions. And if I don't have the answers, we're absolutely gonna find them. So some basic industry key concepts. Let's start with what the heck is cryptocurrency? So very simple, it's a digital payment system using encryption technology to send and receive payments. Let's break that down. Digital payment system, meaning it's digital, it's, elect, it's in the digital space. It's not a paper, pen, um, adding machine, None of those things, it's digital. It is in the digital space. Using encryption technology. We all know one of the really cool things about when I do online shopping, I use a website that has the pad padlock. It has HTTPS. That means it's encrypted, it's secure. We know we're familiar with encryption. That means my personal information, like a credit card number, the date of expiration and that um, co special code, that that information is encrypted, scrambled up so that nobody can get it. So cryptocurrency relies on a digital virtual space, encrypted technology to send and receive payments. So right here is the reason why we find ourselves volatile, susceptible, more likely to fall into financial losses to fall into scams because there's no banks to verify the transaction. There's no entity involved in this. There's no physical form. So this starts the concept that why are we having this conversation? Because we know very little about it. And cryptocurrency is not real money. It, it doesn't exist. It exists in the virtual space. So those are some things to bear in mind immediately. Cryptocurrency, we're most familiar with Bitcoin. But let me pause and introduce to you, there are many forms of cryptocurrency. New ones pop up every day. There's all kinds of words for them. I'm going to really focus on Bitcoin because you're familiar with the terminology of Bitcoin. But please don't think that this Bitcoin is the only type of cryptocurrency. There are many other types. But Bitcoin, Bitcoin is simply the decentralized digital currency that can be transferred from peer to peer on a Bitcoin network. I wanna again highlight, you're gonna hear me highlight some critical words because I want you to go, I get it. And that is decentralized digital currency, meaning there is no entity, government entity, but I, I just simply wanna say there is no entity except for a self-appointed board who is determining the value that it's of the Bitcoin. The variance, the volatility of it day to day is not because there is a banking institution, the Federal Reserve Bank, which sets the percentage rates. There's none of that type of oversight by any regulatory entity. It is simply the wild, wild west of money. So Bitcoin is one type of cryptocurrency, decentralized, and it's a way to have peer-to-peer financial exchange and through a Bitcoin network. Now, when you talk about cryptocurrency, this all relies upon the uh, blockchain. The blockchain is fascinating because it is crypto, it's encrypted um, computer work. That's why um, this whole new industry takes up a lot of electricity, odd 
odd outcome of that. And that's because these computers are working, um, it takes very large computer systems. You have to build literally warehouses of computers to create the blockchain. And that's a digital record of every Bitcoin transaction. If it will, it is, if you will believe, the ledger of the Bitcoin transactions. It has a timestamp and it's irreversible and it's difficult to fake. So the blockchain is the digital record or ledger of your Bitcoin exchanges. Pretty, I mean, it, that's kind of simple, except again, let me say, this is all occurring in um, the, the virtual world, the digital world. It is not occurring real time, touching, feeling, seeing money as we do today. So, your question would likely be, well, how the heck do I get my hands on Bitcoin? How do I buy it and how do I use it? So first of all, there is a cryptocurrency or Bitcoin exchange. So you can get on the exchange. You can Google these. You can Google Bitcoin wallet. You can bit Google Bitcoin exchange. And here's my warning to you, be very, very careful because two things happen when you simply put those, that information into your web browser. One, we know that one, here's one of the first scams that I'm gonna mention. Scam artists are setting up fake websites to impersonate an exchange, impersonate a wallet. So you may be depositing real Bitcoin that you paid for, hard money that you paid for, you may be depositing that into what you think is an exchange, into what you believe is a wallet to store. But a fake website can simply be set up by a scam artist. You think it's real and you um, your money is gone. So you have to be very, very careful. The other thing that happens, and because of the work, the very nature of the work we do, I do put these into my web browser. And then of course I get stalked by um, using cookies. I get all these website advertisements for um, Bitcoin. And um, so it, it becomes part of your history on your uh, internet. So um, you wanna be very careful and not respond to solicitations, particularly Facebook, social media, about Bitcoin or these exchanges. But back to how do you um, how do you buy it, how do you use it? So your Bitcoins relay, um, they rest in an exchange. Again, it's a digital ex exchange. You have to have a Bitcoin wallet to store your Bitcoin. And a Bitcoin wallet, again, as pieces of encrypted information with passwords, links, and I can I can um, go to an app store, get a wallet, I can deposit my Bitcoin, and I can do that all on my cell phone, my computer, my iPad, um, but it requires key words or passwords. And if I lose my passwords to my Bitcoin wallet, I am out of luck because it cannot be recre recreated, it cannot be found, it cannot be recovered, or I say cannot, with a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of effort, it can be, but you have to be careful. So how do I use Bitcoin once I purchase it? I can use it in investments. I can, and let's use the example, if I bought it at $2,000 and then sold it at the height of the market at $30,000, then I've made money on one Bitcoin. So people are betting on Bitcoin to our cryptocurrency to be a form of investment. But as easy and as simple as it is to lose money in the stock market, it is very easy to buy at a rate in which the market declines in Bitcoin or cryptocurrency and you could lose money. I can use Bitcoin in purchasing items. So currently Microsoft, PayPal, even Whole Foods will accept Bitcoin as an exchange for um, purchases. And internationally, cryptocurrency is being used in some countries instead of their own currency. 
And this would be more in um, countries in which their currency is volatile. Um, it's their, their economy is very unstable. And I use examples such as Venezuela and Argentina. So you will see cryptocurrency being used as an exchange for, um, I, I saw one in which it was actually just uh, for an exchange for like a grocery store, but not a grocery store. It was more like a 7-Eleven uh, kind of place. So cryptocurrency is being used in a lot of places in lieu of their own, trans, um, their own currency. So there's many, many uses of it. So you say, okay, well, how do I get my hands on Bitcoin if I want to? Well, how about this, guys? There are Bitcoin ATMs. And that's really, um, that is now an official thing, um, Bitcoin ATMs. So I can go up to an ATM and first of all, I have to register my Bitcoin account at the machine. So, and it simply might be putting in my phone number for low dollar amounts, um, the larger the amount, the more information that I have to put in. So I register my account at the ATM machine. I load uh, the Bitcoin into my wallet and um, I put my wallet information into the ATM and it can be sent to someone else's Bitcoin wallet, just the way Zelle or any payment app works. I can deposit Bitcoin into an ATM, send it somewhere else, or I can deposit it into an ATM. And in some cases, um, they I can um, put it into another investment. So the ATM is a way in which I do my Bitcoin or cryptocurrency exchanges. Now, here's a couple of really interesting points. These ATMs must be registered with the U.S. Treasury Financial Crimes and Enforcement Network, FinCEN. The ATMs that handle Bitcoin must be registered with the U.S. Treasury Department. They have a department specific to this. So are they all registered with the, uh, with the uh, U.S. Department of Treasury? No. That's actually one of the first levels of fraud. And I'm going to read to you, or I'm sorry, read to you, but I am reading my notes just to make sure I get the, the numbers right. So Bitcoin, um, are they're supposed to be regulated, but um, the FBI says, first of all, there's an increase in scammers asking you if you um, are, if they are victimizing you, they'll ask you to go to a Bitcoin ATM to pass to them your payment for the scam that you're being victimized. So Bitcoin ATMs are being used for that. Number two, um, there is there's an instance in which um, I'm trying to find where it was in New Jersey that um, they were finding a huge number of the Bitcoin ATMs weren't registered and they were being used for somebody who was promoting or selling used autos and you paid for the used auto using Bitcoin, went to a Bitcoin machine, deposited the Bitcoin into, which is your legitimate Bitcoin, deposited that through the ATM, went to the scammers, they got the money, there's no, there's no recourse. You could not get that money back. So in New Jersey, this individual had actually ripped off about $600,000 from selling, selling bogus used cars using a Bitcoin ATM. So yeah, they were supposed to be registered, but not all of them are. So as we're having this conversation, I want to step back and just sort of remind you of some of the risks and mind you, I'm not saying don't use Bitcoin. BBB never says don't use Bitcoin. I just want to make you aware of some of the risks uh, if you begin to dabble in this. There's no government oversight. There's no central authority that governs it like they do money whether it's good or bad, and no matter what state of our economy, there is no oversight for Bitcoin cryptocurrency. There's no safeguards which protect you the way other traditional systems do. You know, 
um, within banks. My, if I make a deposit, my deposit is actually insured, um, FDIC insured payment, and my money is good no matter what happens to, if that bank folds, collapses, I, there's insurance for my deposit. There's some oversight and there's some safeguard. If I use a credit card to pay for something, and I fall for a scam, but I paid for it by my credit card. And I find out that's a scammer. I go to my creditor and I dispute the charges and I have some protections. Those safeguards currently do not exist with cryptocurrency. And as I mentioned earlier, scams are using Bitcoin ATMs and QR codes as a method of payment. So that's occurring. And then I even mentioned um, the unlicensed use of ATMs for money laundering. So there are considerable risks when you're talking about using crypto. I say to you, it is very real. But unlike money, cryptocurrency doesn't exist. You can't see, feel it or touch it. There's very little protections and guardrails that you have when you use it. There's no government oversight. So it's a very volatile market. And in fact, there was a period in our time, in our history, and let me say cryptocurrency was invented in two, around 2009. And there's been a point in time in which even the Bank of England considered banning all cryptocurrency and say, you know, we're, we're just, cryptocurrency needs to go away, and be, excuse me, be illegal that we definitely not gotten there, but you do need to figure out what, how to create some, some protection for you, the consumer using cryptocurrency or even considering investing in cryptocurrency. Now let's talk briefly about how cryptocurrency is used in real crime. Um, so one of the very first places to talk about is the dark net. Uh, the dark net marketplaces because cryptocurrency, again, is not regulated, it's not traceable, it's virtually um, virtual uh, in an encrypt encrypted world. Um, this is also one of the places where some of our most egregious humanity actions are going on, the, and that's the exchange of weapons, purchasing, um, you know, drug cartels, the, the worst of the worst are able to congregate and do financial exchanges using cryptocurrency in the dark net. So we know the Department of Justice is very much aware of this. They're definitely attempting to infiltrate this area. And one example I have is in um, 2017, quite some time ago, five years ago, um, but the Department of Justice brought charges against uh, an individual from Russia, uh, $4 billion crimes in crypto. So again, um, these are some dark places doing dark things, but it does exist. And crypto is making it possibly a little easier. Then I mentioned the other already, fake websites are found in crypto related to your Google searches. Um, and one example that was reported to BBB, a website, uh, phantom, P-H-A-N-T-O-M.com is, um, uh, is a real cryptocurrency app. A scam artist set up phantom, P-H-A-N-T-O-N, not M, set that up, people weren't paying attention to their typing, they weren't paying attention to the web browser, and they found this fake website and they were actually doing crypto exchanges there. And of course, once they deposited or turned over their cryptocurrency to the scam artist, the money was gone. Cryptocurrency is being found in the US and across the world and money laundering. And then this delightful new investment scam called rug pull. Rug pull is really easy. Uh, rug pull is where I in, say, hey, we have a new cryptocurrency exchange. It's not called Bitcoin. It's called something else. You can take your current cryptocurrency and invest in this new um, exchange and um, you'll make even more money. So it was an investment, but they pull the rug because they take your crypto 
and the new exchange never comes to fruition. And what was what really made this popular is um, Netflix came out with the the Squid Game, and that's one of the it was very popular. And so um, the scam artist basically said, "We'll um, we'll develop new tokens following the popular Netflix ser series." And your tokens could be used for online games and traded for other types of cryptocurrencies. And these developers took $3.3 million from their victims uh, for this, pulled the rug. The uh, Squid Game cryptocurrency didn't exist, but uh, the scam artists walked away with that money. So a lot of crime is being... I apologize, that crime exists no matter what, but cryptocurrency is playing a new role in uh, cyber crime and all the different types of crime that we already see. So as I look at what I wanted to share, I wanted to actually share with you a couple of examples. And these are victims of cryptocurrency scams that have shared their story with Better Business Bureau. And, um, and, you know, so we had somebody that reached out to us and they saw a YouTube video and I wrote down the name because I'm, I'm okay with doing that. She saw a U YouTube video, uh, Graham Cassidy Trading Services and Graham tra um, Cassidy Trading Services was saying by um, use Cash App by cryptocurrency she bought up to fifteen hundred dollars and they were they were promising her a 300 percent return that she was going to see all of this money she actually saw in her in her account that fifteen hundred dollars hit seven thousand dollars so she was all excited i'm going to get this return and that investment so she went to actually cash in and get the 7,000, not the 1,500 she originally invested. They charged her a handful of fees. And then they came back and said, we're going to charge you for more fees. And then she went back and it was shut down and she couldn't get anything. So she was led to believe through false reports excuse me, false reports that her investment had increased 300%. Come to find out no investment ever was made and the scammer walked away. So lots of investment opportunities are out there, YouTube videos, social media, et cetera. And um, they, what they all have in common is you invest using legitimate cryptocurrency, we promise you, we guarantee you, you're going to see an amazing uh, increase in your investment and then all the money's gone. Then let me tell you the stories of some of the most heartbreaking that one. And this is in romance scams. You guys all know, and my last statement is um, where I want to start, 20% of lost money in romance scams is now being um, related to uh, cryptocurrency. And this is heartbreaking because romance scams are actually one of the most costly scams of all of the scams reported um, in the United States and Canada. Romance scams have the highest dollar value lost uh, because when we fall for them, much like love, we fall very hard. So again, in this case, um, we have people reporting to Better Business Bureau that they were engaged in online dating. They hadn't met this person, but this person began to tell them, I am so excited. I'm investing in cryptocurrency. Um, and, oh, baby, come on. I want to help you grow your money. So they, you know, in this particular case reported to BBB, the um, scam artist said, here is an app I want you to download put buy some bitcoin deposit it in there download this app put it in there and lo and behold we are going to invest together in our future and those that really is the kind of 
con that this individual was led on. And then she got locked out of the account. The, the fake app wasn't obviously real and um, the money that she invested was gone. So again, let me remind you, one Bitcoin is 22,000 up to 30,000. So these individuals are not losing $100 or $20. They're losing sometimes their life savings. So romance scams have really taken hold of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. And let me mention another one, celebrities. There's a lot of celebrities who have egg on their face. They're very embarrassed. They're feeling very uncomfortable. This one is a fake one where um, there was Elon Musk. Uh, somebody set up a fake website that in which Elon Musk is telling everybody, you send me $1,000, I'll send you back $2,000 and only going for one day. So time sensitive, being earmarked by what some might call, you know, a, a business genius, Elon Musk, um, all of this behind it, selling and promoting cryptocurrency investments. So we do have public figures who have gone and tried to encourage others to engage in cryptocurrency and those individuals have lost money. Not always, but in most many, in many, many cases. We find this particularly in social media. We find it in particular TikTok, um, uh, Instagram, and Facebook, the more consumer oriented, not LinkedIn, which is more business. But there we will see these, these things that come to us. My dear friend, whatever their name is, has um, sent me a link and said, you've got to invest in this, invest in this today. Cryptocurrency is the new thing. And um, most of all, my dear friend Jenny did not send it to me. Uh, her account was hacked. A scammer took over it. And the scammer is trying to give me the confidence that a dear friend of mine invested in it. I should invest as well. So social media is promoting a lot of these investment scams, as well as celebrities who promoted some scams and some legitimate ones, but we don't necessarily, um, you know, you don't necessarily purchase those items because a celebrity told you to, you've got to do your homework. So very simple. Um, what are some tips that we have if you, you need to learn and you, we encourage everyone, if you are considering, considering getting into cryptocurrency, please study it. Read everything you can and read it from legitimate sources so that you are sure of what you're doing or as confident as anybody can be, particularly if it's in investments. So if you do this, you will create a crypto wallet. Remember to guard your wallet, you lose the key, you lose the password, your funds are gone, it can't be retrieved. Except for, I'm going to mention there are some companies who now are there to retrieve all your lost funds because you lost the key, watch out for them because ask them, how can they do that? How can they get into your account with uh, it being an encrypted and so many banks and um, blocks of um uh, exchanges encrypted information, how can they break through that? So it's a really good question. If you are looking to study, if you're looking to download apps, if you're engaged in that, look carefully at the email addresses and the website addresses. Remember I told you phantom.com is a legitimate wallet app. Well, and somebody found Fanton. So you've really got to look at the the spelling and the email addresses um, have like my email address ends with um, at greater Maryland, greatermd.bbb.org. So, you know, when you get an email from me, that hover effect, you can see it has BBB in it. You know, it's um, traces back to our website. So be very careful and, and uh, look at those, which is piece of advice for any online shopping as well. We encourage you at this point, don't pay for products with cryptocurrency. Frequently, that is what scam artists are going to ask you to do, is if they have sold you something um, and they want you to pay for it, 
And that could even be, um, we're the IRS and we want you to pay your past due um, taxes using Bitcoin, go to an ATM machine and do it. Don't fall for that. Um, you really, that is, um, at this point, we really discourage people from paying for regular products using cryptocurrency. Beware of fake recovery companies. I mentioned that. You have to watch out for fake reviews. Are they real or not? When somebody says this crypto investment and they endorse it, celebrity endorsements. Um, and uh, as I mentioned, claims made on social media, friends who reach out to you on social media. And if you're looking for apps, please, right now, the apps you should download are from Google Play or the App Store related to cryptocurrency. Those appear, in our opinion, and that of the FTC to be the most reliable apps in the industry of cryptocurrency. Excuse me. And lastly, just don't fall for the belief that you will have guaranteed returns on your investment if somebody guarantees it. It's much like any stock, any investment that you do. If you're doing it for investment purposes, Bitcoin can go up, it can go down, it's unregulated, it's a volatile item currently. So um, please be careful and don't fall for any guaranteed results. So lastly, if you find yourself to be a victim of cryptocurrency scam, whether or being presented as uh, what you believe to be a scam, I always want to encourage you, do not let pride, do not let self-doubt, do not let anything prevent you from reporting it. It is so important to report. So you can report any complaints or, um, or scams to bbb.org. And our scam tracker is a wonderful tool for reporting any type of scam that you've been exposed to. And you can simply find that at bbb.org slash scam tracker. FTC, you can file a complaint online or um, by phone and the internet crime complaint. And I also want to mention IC3. You can file complaints there of any scam or fraud. Um, but our data, the BBB data, is uploaded to the FTC and to the IC3. So they use our data to collect their annual reports. So um, please make sure you just always take the time to report. So that's basically the conclusion of, um, of what I had to share today. I hope that was somewhat helpful, maybe um, sparked some interest in at least learning this topic. And um, I'll leave you there. Okay, that was so interesting, but very frightening. <laughs> very frightening. Um, folks, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat or the Q&A right now. Um, because we're we're lucky to have Angie with us today who can answer any of your questions, anything you've been curious about regarding crypto. I'm wondering, has the government been working on any regulations to try and protect people, to try and uh, put legislation in place to um, rein this investment situation in? What's going on with that federally or statewide? Yeah, I will. Um, what I do know is uh, basically what I've read that's avail available and open to the public. Yes, the federal government in partnership also with other countries, they are absolutely looking at the pros and the cons of this industry and then working with financial experts, particularly those in financial regulation, at what type of regulations could they put into place that are literally the safeguards, the guardrails to help better protect. But currently there is no legislation that I'm aware of at all because that would mean solutions would have to be identified and part of it comes into to legislation. So I'm not aware any legislative activity. I am aware and it's very public that um, national, international entities are gathering together to look at some of the problems that are arising from this and any safeguards they need to put in place. Well, I don't see any questions. All right. So, um... well, I'm just going to take it that 
Um, I, as much as my information, and of course we were doing, very, we're having treetop conversations, not down here in the weeds, but at least I hope I gave you enough information to get you to dig deeper if you're interested in investment, to think twice before you make payments, and to remember to report it if you um, experience any type, if you're approached with any type of scam or what you question, hmm, I'm not sure this is legit. Please ask. Well, thank you so much. All right, my pleasure.